Hi, it's Michael, and today I'm reviewing Nespresso's Creatista Plus Espresso Machine. This is it right here. It is a real beauty. I'm telling you, it looks like a serious machine. And uh, overall, I have to say, I've had it probably for about two weeks now, and I'm very pleased with it. Now, this replaces the Gran Latissima machine, which I had three of. That's right, three. Not because I loved them so much, I wanted three, because none of the three worked correctly. Each of them had the same problem, or problems, I should say. The main problem, though, was the frother. The milk frother just did not work reliably. I never knew if I was going to get the proper amount of milk and or froth from the machine. Sometimes it would work beautifully. I could make another, uh, let's just call it a cappuccino. I could make a second cappuccino just a couple minutes later, and uh, nothing would come out of the nozzle except steam. Uh, dripping water and steam. <laughs> so uh, it was it was just very infuriating. So Nespresso replaced the machine twice for me. I had a total of three Grand Latissimas and all of them had the same problem. When I was on the Nespresso website I looked at reviews for the Grand Latissima and I would have to say the vast majority of the reviews were also basically expressing the same issues that I had. So fortunately, Nespresso customer service was quite accommodating and I would give them five stars for the treatment of the issues that I was having. Ultimately, they offered me another machine altogether and that is what I'm reviewing for you today, the Creatista Plus. Now this is a beautiful machine. It, it looks sharp. It, it has a very professional kind of a grade appearance to it. Um, it comes in several different finishes. I have the stainless steel version and most of it actually is stainless steel. There's a few parts here that are chrome plated plastic, but overall the side panels, the top panel, the tray, the drip tray here, this is all stainless steel. So it seems to be fairly sturdy and well built. Uh, what you get when you get the machine is you also get the user guide. Uh, you get a brief start uh, manual. Um, they also give you a nice stainless steel milk jug. This is for frothing your milk. Uh, this is 16 ounces and on the inside of the jug or the outside that you can see from the inside they have two lines. One is a minimum line, the other is a maximum line. You're supposed to put in at least the minimum level of milk and no more than the maximum line of milk. And I usually put it right in between the two. Uh, so anyway, it's a nice sturdy milk jug for frothing your milk. And then you also get a sampler pack of Nespresso capsules. Uh, it's really nice that they do that because it does give you an opportunity to try a large variety of the Nespresso capsules for their original line machine. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I, on the other hand, actually use third-party capsules quite often. Uh, Cafe Bustelo, and then I've got another Cafe Espresso. I've also gotten Pete's capsules and Starbucks capsules, plus a, a few more that I don't even remember the names. But uh, there's a lot of third-party capsules out there, and in my experience, for the most part, they all work really well. Every once in a while, uh, I'll get a misfire or uh, it'll just take a long time for the espresso to be made. But overall, I'm pretty happy and plus there's a huge cost savings to some of the third party capsules. And I believe the quality, you have to shop around and get what you like, but I think you can get a comparable quality uh, coffee experience. So anyway, I've done a lot of talking. Let's get to the machine here. I'd like to give you a little tour of the machine and uh, demonstrate how it works. One of the main things I like about this machine is it has a, a quite a large water reservoir. Now the Gran Latissima only had about a 30 ounce reservoir. This is 50.7 ounces, so it holds quite a bit more and I just find that that's a matter of convenience. I just don't have to fill the water reservoir as often. Now there's two ways to fill it. You can either just take off the lid on the back and then bring your water over to it in a pitcher or whatever. Filtered water is very important to use. And uh, the other way to uh, fill it obviously is to just remove it from the machine, take it over to your water source and fill it and then put it back on the machine. Now at the bottom of the uh, machine here, underneath the water reservoir is a little tool. This is the storage area for this little tool. Basically it just has a little needle on it and that needle is used to clean the tip of the nozzle for the steam wand. 
this uh, end of the nozzle here has four little holes in it. Over time, they could probably get a little clogged. Uh, they also give you a water hardness testing strip. Now, that's important to test your water because that will determine how often the machine will want to descale. So once you use the test strip, you'll put the reading that you get from that into the machine, program it into the machine, and then the machine will automatically remind you that it's time to descale the machine. Now, as far as descaling the machine, you can either buy the grossly overpriced Nespresso descaling solution, or you can DIY it. And you do that by using white vinegar and water. I usually dilute the white vinegar in a three to one ratio. So three parts water, one part white vinegar. I fill the water container about half full using that ratio. And then I just run it through the machine uh, making lungos each time because that's the largest volume of water that you can get through the machine. So I, I just make a few lungos in a time to run that vinegar through the machine. That will descale it and then run clean water through the machine a few times to make sure you've gotten rid of all the vinegar. So having said that, let me show you the rest of the machine. This lever up here opens up and that's where you insert your capsules. And when the capsules have been ejected, they drop down here into this container. This will hold 12 spent capsules. So you've got quite a lot of space in there for 12 drinks before you have to empty that. Below that is a little thing you push and that makes a nice little tray for you. When you're making an espresso in a small espresso cup like this, you can just set it on the tray to make the drink and so that's really convenient. If you're not using that little tray, then you've got a platform here for a larger cup. Uh, say that you're making a cappuccino or a larger latte macchiato or something, you could put it down on the larger tray here. Now this little tray that comes out, you can also take this completely out of the machine for cleaning, so that's nice. And this is a pretty robust little tray. Uh, I don't think it's flimsy at all. I did see another review somewhere and the guy was complaining that he felt it was really flimsy. I don't think so, not at all. It's very sturdy, it's quite substantial, and I don't think you'll have any problem with that. Then we have the tray down at the bottom, the drip tray, and basically this pulls out because over time this will accumulate water, not only after this drips a little time after you make uh, coffee sometime, but also the a steam wand has a self auto cleaning feature where after you've made your froth and warmed your milk when you put it into the down position it'll automatically go into a self cleaning mode where it ejects steam and some hot water through the nozzle and that collects down here as well so to let you know when it's time to empty that drip tray there's a little float in here when this thing floats up that little red button will stick through the bottom here and you'll see it sticking up and that's your cue to empty your drip tray over here you've got another little button that's actually a temperature sensor so when you put your milk in your frothing jug your milk jug and then put it on the sensor once this starts working to warm your milk and make the froth uh, it'll shut itself off automatically once you've gotten to the proper temperature. So that's a nice, a nice feature there as well. So what I'd like to do is actually go through uh, the process of making uh, an espresso drink and also a milk-based drink. Uh, this makes a variety of different drinks. You can make a ristretto, an espresso, or a lungo. Lungo is just a long shot, so that's uh, going to give you about 3.7 ounces or 110 milliliters. Uh, the espresso is supposed to deliver 1.3 ounces or 40 milliliters, and the ristretto is supposed to give you 25 milliliters, which is 0.85 ounces. In practice, I have found that this machine gives you more than that for each of those three drinks. And you can actually adjust the volume of the drink that this machine produces by using the menu system, which I will show you. I'm actually going to make a separate video for the menu system because that'll just make this video too long if I do that. So check up here for the link to that video. Now, um, once you decide to use this machine there's no on off button per se there's just a start button but when you push that start button that turns the machine on and then the menu lights up and you just choose the drink that you want so in addition to the three drinks that i just mentioned you can also make a flat white a cafe latte a cappuccino or a latte macchiato there's also a setting here for just steaming milk 
and then there's a setting for a steam purge then you've got your maintenance menu and then you've got a settings menu again click uh, the link that I provided earlier to see the whole deal with that menu because it's a little more to go into there to get you all the details all right so I'm going to make a lungo so I'm just going to open this drop in one of my capsules snap it down now the menu will have a picture of the lungo so I know that I'm in the right menu open up the little tray for my cup push the start button see how fast the warm-up time was only about five seconds so there's no long wait when you want to make an espresso or any drink for that matter that's really uh, inst instant go here you don't have to wait five or ten minutes for the thing to warm up I really like that now no matter whether I use the Nespresso capsules or a third-party capsule they all seem to produce a really nice crema and you can see the crema developing here and I've actually found that the froth and foam that's developed is so nice that you can really do latte art if you've got the proper skills I do not have the proper skills but I will show you the process here in just a moment the machine also operates fairly quietly as far as my opinion goes I think that's about as quiet as you could expect for an espresso machine so there we go now this will continue to drip a little bit that's pretty common with an espresso machines but there is that lungo and it's got a very nice amount of crema on the top so that's pretty nice let me just put this down here for a second now for the next drink I'd like to demonstrate I'm gonna make a cappuccino so I'm just gonna change the menu here to cappuccino I'm gonna eject the pod I've got another pod here that I'll get ready I'll drop that in there now for the milk you want to use dairy milk you don't want to use almond milk you can use almond milk but that's at your own risk um, Nespresso does not endorse anything but dairy milk so I use 1% but you can also use whole milk and whole milk actually gives, gives you a little bit of a nicer quality foam than 1% but 1% does a really nice job too so what I'm going to do here is put the wand into the cold milk going to get my cup up here and the first thing I'm going to do is push the start button it's going to pull another shot of espresso Right, and then the menu will actually give you a prompt to start the milk so I just push the start button again and now it will froth the milk When it changes sounds like that, that's when it's developing uh, more of the froth as opposed to just warming the milk. Alright, now that that's stopped, I'm going to remove the milk jug and I'm going to immediately wipe down the steam wand. And then as soon as I put it down, it's going to self-clean.
And that's that. So now we're just going to make the rest of the drink. And this is where your experience comes into play, which I don't have. <laughs> I'm going to try to pour the milk in. You don't want to destroy the top layer of crema because the foam, the white from the foam is what lets you do the latte art. So once you get the milk in there, then you have more foam to work with. And, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm sure someone with experience could actually make something interesting. See how beautiful that is? Not. Uh, anyway, <laughs> but the taste will still be good even though it doesn't look that great. But I think the point is that if you've got the skills, you can make latte art. I'm going to keep working on this and maybe someday I'll be able to have a video of me actually making something beautiful. Let me take a sip of my drink. Perfect temperature. Um, I actually think the temperature of the espresso is just right for me. Uh, I have heard a few people complaining that they don't think it's hot enough. Well, um, the milk is hot. So once you make a milk drink, the milk itself uh, is going to heat whatever amount of cooling down the espresso might have done while it was sitting there. I find that the perfect temperature to drink. Not too hot. Uh, hot enough that I'm not complaining about the heat whatsoever. So that is the relatively uh, complete look at the Creatista Plus. So again, check the previous link that I provided in order for you to see the whole menu system. Uh, I will just briefly say that the menu system does give you the ability to change the heat of the milk and also the amount of froth that's developed. You can also change the amount of espresso that's delivered for any of the drinks that you make. The default values seem to work fine though. It's not complicated. Uh, don't be intimidated. You can just do nothing with that menu except choose the drink you want and I think you'll be perfectly happy. Overall, I really like this machine. I think it's vastly superior to the Gran Latissima. Overall, I really uh, can endorse the Cretista Plus. I believe it's far superior in operation to the Gran Latissima. I've had no real problems with this. The only minor issue is that it does deliver a little more volume than it's supposed to. And to prove that point, let me move this to a ristretto. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, a ristretto is supposed to deliver 0.85 ounces. So this is a one ounce shot glass. I'm going to eject a capsule. I'm just going to run hot water through here. If this overflows, that means that we're getting more than 0.85 ounces because this is one ounce. So let's see what happens. All right, it overflowed. So that means it's giving me over an ounce and it's only supposed to be 0.85 ounces. So that is not a huge big deal. Um, the menu actually does give you the ability to alter the coffee volume, but in a ristretto, you can't go any less than what is the default, but you can make more. So if you want to increase the volume a little bit, and that's a, a good thing. Uh, the final point I'll make is, although the ability to increase the volume of each drink level is there, do you really want to do that? These capsules only have a small amount of coffee in them. If you start putting more water through them than the ideal amount of water, you're just going to end up with a watered down drink. So if anything, I would suggest not increasing the volume of the water that goes through there unless you like watered down espresso. So that's it. That is my review of the Nespresso Creatista Plus. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them if I can. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Have a great day and please hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. Stay safe. Talk to you next time.